Hello and welcome to From Digital to D&D. In this series, a character from fiction is taken and given a usable stat block for you to use in your games of Dungeons and Dragons. For those of you unaware, each episode of this series will be broken down into the following sections. The character introduction where I attempt to explain the background of the character. The feature breakdown where I point out what aspects of the character I'll be attempting to convert. The stat block where the stat block is shown off and certain elements are discussed. And finally, the plot hooks, where I explain possible uses for the character in your games of D&D. Naturally, any character that features in this series belongs to their respective owners. A classic villain, hailing from the early days of gaming, steps into the ring, one of Nintendo's flagship characters. Let us look at the King of the Coopers, leader of the Cooper Troop, the one, and only, Bowser. <laughs> Showtime! Bowser, also known as King Bowser Cooper, is the main antagonist of the Super Mario franchise. The tyrannical King of the Cooper Troop is the arch nemesis of the Plumber Mario. With his army of minions, Bowser dreams of ruling the entire world and making Princess Peach his bride. Over the years, King Cooper has enacted countless schemes of conquests, most often aimed at the Mushroom Kingdom where his true love resides. Most of Bowser's plans involve kidnapping Princess Peach and making her his wife, but the other goal is simply conquest. If not for the intervention of Mario and Luigi, Bowser would have long ago achieved his dreams of conquest. Though Bowser is a Cooper, he is unique in his appearance, being far larger and fearsome than his turtle brethren. With his unrivaled strength, Bowser has firmly placed himself as the ruler of the Cooper Kingdom. Though he may come off as brutish at times, Bowser is cunning and the endless war for world domination has helped him refine his already sharp instincts. When Bowser enacts a scheme, he most often succeeds in pulling off the initial step and taking his enemy by surprise. It is only through the efforts of the Mario Bros undermining him that Bowser is eventually pushed back. Bowser's ambition has no limit and he has successfully conquered whole galaxies. He loves to revel in his villainy and living up to the image of the evil king. The King Cooper having an unparalleled level of confidence. No matter how many times Bowser is defeated, he will keep trying. Bowser is no fool and knows what is best for his interests. If a larger threat comes along, Bowser will team up with the Mario Bros to stop it, though only because he believes that the world is his alone. Whilst Bowser may be cruel, he is not without love specifically towards his family. Bowser is a good father to his son, Bowser Jr., raising him to one day take his place as Cooper Monarch. Whilst he may be teaching his bratty son the ways of tyranny, Bowser has a clear love for his son. With the power and might at his disposal, it's no wonder why Bowser remains an ever-present threat and one of the most iconic villains in gaming. Bowser's main strength is just that his strength. His raw, physical strength is unsurpassed. Bowser can smash through boulders with ease, lift immensely heavy objects including a whole castle, pull himself out of the more of a black hole, stop a full speed train, and much more. And Bowser uses his superhuman strength constantly. Unlike most other Coopers, Bowser has a few natural weapons at his disposal. Whilst he carries a shell, Bowser's shell is covered in spikes, which make an attack from behind near impossible. His claws are unnaturally sharp, able to slash through anything, even the highly durable moon metal. Bowser can exhale fire from his toothy maw in a number of ways. He can focus it into a stream, unleash a rain of fire, send out single fireballs, or even exhale homing fireballs. But... That all pales into comparison to Bowser's greatest asset, his durability. Bowser has been drenched in lava, electrocuted, blown up, crushed by objects as heavy as his own castle, rammed into a rock that had fallen hundreds of feet, sucked into a black hole and ejected back through the Earth's atmosphere, blown up by an entire room of bob and even squashed underfoot by a T-Rex, and has inevitably survived each fate. It took the literal end of the universe in Super Mario Galaxy to kill him. 
Bowser is still hurt by attacks and can be killed, but it is extremely difficult to do so. And even if you manage to kill him, his Magic Coopers will just resurrect him. And even if they can't, his spirit can possess his skeleton to just keep on fighting. His stamina is just as limitless as his durability. Bowser almost never shows signs of tiring, even after massively expending himself for hours. He's wielded countless forms of magic over the years, though most are the result of external factors. One option is gigantification. Bowser has enlarged himself several times in battle to enhance his already great strength. Most of the time, Bowser requires empowerment from Kamek to achieve this power, but if his body is supercharged with adrenaline, he can reach gigantic sizes naturally. Bowser is more than happy to use his weight to his advantage, overpowering and crushing foes under his bulky form. And if he needs to, Bowser can retract into his shell to protect himself before propelling himself at his enemies. And whilst he may appear as a dumb brute, Bowser has demonstrated a sharp intellect several times. It takes someone with great courage to stand up against Bowser. Bowser is a large threat, and his sheet reflects that. You're welcome to look through the sheet at your own pace, but there are a few areas I want to highlight, starting with Bowser's strength. With a strength score of 26, Bowser is a powerhouse. And with the powerful build trait, this goes even further, as whilst Bowser is large, he has the might of a huge creature. To help him transition into d and I've made Bowser a turtle, which means he's a humanoid. He has a vast range of attack options and his fire breath can be used in several ways. Bowser can blast it at a powerful line, create a raid of fire to scorch the battlefield, or send a homing fireball at an enemy. And of course, the mighty Koopa King can use his shell. Like a turtle, Bowser can retract into his shell to increase his already high natural armor class by bringing it to 24. Unlike a turtle, Bowser could do this as a bonus action and his damage resistances become immunities. The only downside to being in his shell is that his speed is zero, he has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws, and he can't take any form of actions except for two specific legendary actions. Bowser loves to make his enemies feel fear, either by being naturally intimidating or unleashing his roar which can strike fear into the heart of another. And the tankiness doesn't end there. Bowser has a special reaction called Tough Guy, which lets him reduce any damage he takes. Bowser must expend a hit dice to do this, and by default reduces the damage by 1d10 plus 9. However, Bowser can choose to expend up to 4 more hit dice to make it 5d10 plus 9, meaning Bowser can withstand incredible blows and not even flinch. Of course, Bowser has legendary actions, and with Bowser Bomb, he can pin a target under him by landing on them. Whirling Fortress could only be used whilst Bowser is in his shell, but it lets him move up to 60 feet in any direction, even upwards, as he spins in his shell. Whilst moving this way, any creature within 5 feet of him must make a DC 21 dexterity saving throw or take 5d10 slashing damage, though it can only happen to them once per turn. And naturally, Bowser has a mythic trait, Giant Bowser. When this trait activates, Bowser receives the effects of the Enlarge Reduce spell, specifically the Enlarged part. That means he becomes huge, he has advantage on strength checks and saves, and his attacks deal additional 1d4 damage. Note that he receives the effects of the spell, but it isn't the spell itself, meaning it can't be dispelled. With his mythic actions, he can make more attacks, swap it in and out of his shell with ease, or unleash his wrath. Bowser charges in a line, crushing everything in his path before launching a devastating hit on a single creature that could send it flying if it connects. Bowser's only real weakness is his lack of defense against spells, though his durability should help compensate for that. A party should think twice before taking on Bowser in a fight. Bowser fits very nicely as a classic form of antagonist within a game of D&D, the tyrannical evil king who seeks to conquer other lands. So I would suggest letting him play the part, but you can do so much with him. After all, Bowser can fulfil many roles. Sticking to the classic route, what if the party have heard the tale that a neighbouring kingdom has declared war by launching a devastating strike on the kingdom the party now walk through? 
the attack was swift and brutal, and the king of the neighbouring kingdom took a member of the royalty hostage to force the people of the kingdom to submit. The party could be asked to act, serving as an unofficial way of fighting back, as an open attack could have cost the kidnapped royal their life. But if you want a little nuance, what if all those jokes about Peach letting herself be kidnapped were true in this case? Maybe the party finally besieged Bowser's throne room only to find that the kidnapped royal actually loves him back and together they plan to rule the world. Then the party have to deal with the powerhouse of Bowser and whatever power the royal might have, making them a deadly duo. You could also use this angle but have the royal under mind control, meaning the party have to be careful in fighting back. Another way of using Bowser is as a rival faction to the party. For example, the party are on the hunt for magical artifacts, and when they finally find one, a legion of Koopas burst through the wall led by Bowser. If this is the first time meeting the party, he may not think them worth the time to deal with and simply laugh at them as he absconds with the artifacts. As the party dismantle his operations, the anger of the Cooper King rises until he decides to stop the party himself. Of course, Bowser loves the theatrics of a battle, so he will intentionally await the party in his throne room, or in a special arena with lava or an audience. Bowser doesn't have to be the antagonist though, at least not the primary antagonist. Perhaps Bowser has been dethroned and is working with whatever is left of his faction, plotting his revenge and preparing to reclaim his throne. Maybe the one who took this throne is a greater threat and the party must convince Bowser to work with them. Or maybe he comes to them to ask for help. After all, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Bowser could work in multiple settings, even Spelljammer. Maybe a region of wild space has been claimed by the Cooper Troop as Bowser makes his push for universal conquest. He can be the main threat or just another faction. Bowser is surprisingly fluid in how you can use him. But with that we've reached the end of today's video. Before you head off I would like to thank you for watching and I hope you managed to get something out of this. The stat block for Bowser is available on D&D Beyond for free and the link to it is in the description. I hope you all have a great day, may your dice roll favourably. Goodbye for now.